Hello, hello. Am I coming through okay? Can you see me and hear me? Welcome to the stream. We're going to be having a look at some Gloomhaven buttons and bugs, which like, I, I really like the way that they've done the box stuff, that it is like, it's like a miniature Gloomhaven. As soon as I go onto the table, ruin the illusion that it's a great big box. Well, these would have to be enormous cards, wouldn't they, for it to be a great big box? But it's like the same great big chest as Gloomhaven, but tiny. This is, as I've said many, many times already, a miniature version of Gloomhaven. This is a solo only 20 minute scenario kind of game, but still, you know, there, there are scenarios, there are paths, there are different characters. So what I've got out on the table right now is one of the six characters that come in the game. We've got the Cragheart, and this is going to test the auto zoom of the auto focus of the camera because these are tiny. But there you go, look at the little Cragheart mini. Because with tiny little minis, oh, well, let's test it even further. Can it possibly capture all of them in one go? I've got faith in it. Sometimes they're standing on coins and stuff. I can't get them straight in my hand even. Can you keep your hands straight enough for the focus to look at them? Look at them! They're tiny, but they're still lovely Cragheart and Mind Thief and stuff. So yes, we have got the Cragheart out now. And the other characters that come with it are the Spellweaver, the Silent Knife, the Mind Thief, the Tinkerer, and the Bruiser. They aren't locked classes or anything like that. Uh, you just pick one of them and go through the story in there. So I was thinking, like, I'm not sure. We're going to do a few scenarios at least because they are quick scenarios. That's the idea of it. I'm thinking we'll probably do at least three. We'll, we'll see how time see where time takes us but i'll probably ask in between like really you should just carry on your campaign as one character and then play another one next time uh, but maybe to show other ones off maybe we'll flip between them a bit all i have done so far is the bruiser because that's the one it recommends you to start with and it is like a like in the the learn to play that comes with it and the crag heart because the crag heart is my uh first and only love it's my starting character of Proper Gloomhaven, a big Gloomhaven. Hey, Jack Pod, seeing you fine, brilliant, thank you. Joey, I don't know what happened to your message. The box and are just a giant. That is true. I've undergone some changes since the last time we played Gloomhaven. And now I can just crush it. So, yeah, some, like, this is all of the kind of puzzly, dungeon crawling y gameplay of Gloomhaven, like a lot of the rules, if you're familiar with Gloomhaven, you'll be able to jump into this pretty quickly. There's still a learn to play that can get you used to some of the main changes. There's a dice tutorial, we did that to learn the game. Rachel and I played a few scenarios like kind of co-op solo, as we have with things before. Uh, the dice, I haven't done a dice tutorial for a while. I did a video actually, it's for Blood Rage, to, to show off dice. And I thought it was like, it, it was a well done tutorial, but it was like a, it was like a text to sp text to speech thing on it, whereas I remember the Blood Rage was a voice actor and everything. Maybe I'm wrong and it's just my hearing, but yeah, it's a good tutorial. Other than that, but uh, yes, you you will be familiar with most of the stuff. There's some major changes, but you know how enemies work, initiative works, uh, how modifiers affect things, the symbols, so much of it is going to be instantly familiar if you have played Gloomhaven or Frosthaven before. Hey, I meant to introduce myself as... Uh, I'm Tom, who is the co-designer of two scenarios of Frosthaven. Just ignore that middle bit. Co-designer. Rachel will be up in a minute as well for a brief visit, I think. The other co-designer of, to be perfectly honest, two scenarios in Frosthaven. I don't know, has anyone unlocked them yet? Anyone found them? Hey Rich, how's it going? Yes, this this is uh, this was part of a, an enormous backer kit campaign for so many things Gloomhaven. Right, it was part it was part of the whole thing, right? With the miniatures and the RPG and all of that, and one of the options was this uh, little solo only miniature Gloomhaven. So yes, I'm showing you the the bits that you would start with for the Cragheart. If you just want like a kind of, how is this different to Gloomhaven? Well, we've got these four cards. Those are the ones that you will pick. It's still 
pick two cards for your turn, top thing of one, bottom thing of the other, ignore an action on top to get two attack, an action on bottom to get two movement, and pick one as your initiative, that's going to be the turn order, lowest to highest number. But the, the changes of this, so usually in Gloomhaven we used to, you play a card, I see Rach's head up here, Hi Rach. You're also a co-designer of two scenarios of Frosthaven, aren't you? Am I? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yeah? We're playing the Cragheart. Your favourite. Well, yeah. My starting one. Was, your, was the Spellweaver your starting one? Yeah. That's someone you got to later. I reached with the Spellweaver in our original Gloomhaven campaign. The Magician. Yeah. Maybe I'll switch between in the scenarios and we'll see some different characters. So yes, we've got four char four cards you pick to play them, but when they are played in Gloomhaven, they would be discarded and we'd rest and stuff to get them back. First of all, in Buttons and Bugs, they flip to their B-sides and they do different things on their B-sides. And uh, so sometimes you will want to plan out your turns. You know a particular thing you need, a particular uh, element or something is on the back of a card and you need to have it in your hand. Uh, so yeah, you'll want particular B-sides to be available at the right time. Once you've played them from their B-sides, and you can just play an A and a B again, the A would flip, the B would discard. And there's resting in this as well. It works slightly differently. Still, you know, choose to have a long rest or a short rest. Short rest, you can go straight away, but you're going to randomly lose a card. Long rest, you don't get a turn in that round, but you um, will heal a bit and you get to choose which card you're going to lose. There's still very powerful effects on cards that will make you lose them for the rest of the scenario. But I think let's jump into it. We'd have a look at some things because, yeah, you know, to, to start the stream off a little bit. So I think we should start with the, the scenario deck. I can show you some uh, some things here. The good thing about this is, I did have it originally set up with my green screen camera that zooms in on stuff. It was barely any bigger than this because the game is uh, so miniature that the camera can pretty much focus on this. So you can use the deck like a book, but I'll just do one at a time so uh, we can just see one thing. So this is the, the story of Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs that's going to lead us to Scenario 1. So that shrinking feeling. What a time for Gloomhaven. First, a black tornado from the void nearly destroyed the city. Then there were reports of the very essence of corruption trying to end everything. But all's well that ends well. At the centre of both events, Hale, a mysterious Easter who lives in a derelict tavern, the Crooked Bone. It is said she can turn anyone into a hero, exactly who, exactly what you want to be. Sure, you don't have a lot of training, but put it... I can't speak. Sure, you don't have a lot of training, but in front of the right adventure, you'd get the acclaim that is due to you. So, with that bold purpose, you step across the threshold of the Crooked Bone and... No, that's not right. Everything is growing. Why is the doorway so large? Why are you so... small? Is this some sort of Easter enchantment? You've been shrunk. Play Scenario 1, a rude welcome. Ignore these bits for now. We will find out about them soon enough. Scenario 1, a rude welcome. Got some fancy gear there. You whirl around, taking in your familiar yet unfamiliar surroundings. Your attention settles on a scruffy character behind you, luckily on par with your diminutive stature. Nice and shiny. It's like it's never been used. Hand it all over, and I'll let you live. Well, that simply won't do. Your gear is unused, but there's really only one solution for that. Here's our scenario. Monsters, bandit guard. Goal, defeat all monsters. Let's zoom out for a second, because I can now bring in the bandit guards so for each type of enemy you are fighting they have this little uh, dual layer display board here they've got this little cube we've got two um, health trackers for well, spoiler we're gonna have two bandit guards in a sec they've got their modifier board here not a deck we've got a modifier board as well and a die will be used and if I grab the card, so there is the resolution of the scenario at the bottom of this uh, page. If we flip it over, there is our scenario. There is our map and stuff and all of the things that will be set up for it. So zooming in, I've mixed up my crag heart with all the others now. There is the crag heart for bird's eye purposes. We're going to be looking at him from above, but he's the only mini that's going to be about. 
And then we have got colored cubes representing the enemies that are going to be about here. So we know that the only type in here is the bandit guard. Number one, we can see is the green one and it corresponds to the green dial. And number two is the blue one here. So as they move about, the cubes represent them. This is just where they are to start with. We have got the green spaces are impassable spaces, like obstacles. Uh, we have got traps and things. If you walk over them or get pushed into them, you'll take a damage. I say loads of this stuff, if you have played Gloomhaven, is, uh, works exactly the same way. It's just how some of the particulars are resolved. It's a really, really nice way of doing it, which I should say as well. It is from Joe... I'm just trying to remember his first name because his second name is on the box. Yes, it's Joe Clipfell who designed an 18-card miniature version of Gloomhaven called Gloomholden. Never got around to printing, but I heard so many good things about uh, who has... So that fan-made thing with uh, designer Nikki Valens has been turned into buttons and bugs with loads of lovely shiny things. So let's uh, let's get into it and see how it works. So our objective for this, which I've flipped over onto the back of this card now, is defeat all monsters. It's a oh, nice scenario. That's what it's going to be, isn't it? Hey, John. Mike. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Box size is not what you were expecting. What were you expecting? Bigger, smaller? It's, it is like, I wonder if this is like the exact kind of uh, scale of the Gloomhaven box, because it's the same kind of tall, small thing. I really like that about it. Does it look silly on back and you see it in action? Yeah, it's such a, it's such a good idea. Like, so, there's so many things about this that as, as we were learning, it was just, oh, such a cool way of uh, shrinking that thing from Gloomhaven down. So like the main the main things you say like the, the the main differences from Gloomhaven will be that you're playing it solo. So a load of the interplay of oh not quite sure of the initiative of how we're gonna work together to use these abilities, it's solo only, so obviously that isn't there. There's no like unlocks of stuff, but you could say um, some of these things about Jaws of the Lion as well. You thought it was about Jaws of the Lion size? No, that's that was that was mini glo that was mini Gloomhaven. This this is micro Gloomhaven. But there are still 20 something there's there's still 20 scenarios in this with branching stuff and leveling up your character and stuff you will see, we'll see at the end of this you'll see how we we go on to other things and maybe we'll switch characters just to show you some other characters although i'm perfectly happy with the crag heart which we could have a look actually at the the back of the crag heart's card so they've all got a complexity crag heart is low complexity the crag heart is a whirlwind of destruction they channel the raw power of the earth and use their fists and the terrain as weapons making use of obstacles to cause extra damage it tells us which cards we're supposed to start with which is easy because they've all got a level one on them part of the level ups of the game are that depending on the level of your scenario it told us in the setup that this is a level one scenario so we get none of this stuff but for each level, you can choose to level up one of your ability cards, as well as some other cool stuff. So we are in here. I think the scenario is set up, and it's time for us to pick some cards. So the Kragheart is a bit beefy, a bit attacky. He's, he's an all-rounder, really, but he loves messing about with obstacles. My favourite things about the early days of Gloomhaven were making rocks fall down on um, on enemies constantly. And I think sometimes causing a lot of damage to Rach. But hey, that, that's rocks. You can't control them once the crack hearts made them appear. So let's see what we should do. So we can cause a dirt tornado. Uh, it's got a wide kind of area of effect. Doesn't do a lot of damage to stuff. Just one damage, but it, it muddles enemies, making uh, them potentially miss us. We could... We could just really do a simple walk up to something and hit something. Which might be a good idea, really. Because the way we are at the start, I don't think... Have we got any pushes or anything like that? No, this, this symbol here is range. So range of two, you can put this uh, AOE. Choose an obstacle with range. We've got no like pushing or anything to put people into the traps at the moment. It might be an idea to have a walk over somewhere and just do a big hit. Because this explosive punch here, it does three damage, plus one if the target is adjacent to an obstacle. If we go first, they're all adjacent to obstacles. And let's see, 
This guy over here is just two spaces away. This guy's three spaces away. If we move over to either of them, the other one's probably not going to be able to reach us, whatever they do, because the, the gods, we'll see this more on their turn in a sec, but you can see the three potential things that gods will all do on their turn, similar to, you know, how the, the decks worked, that we drew a card in Gloomhaven and it was tell us what the enemies are going to do. Here, we're going to roll a die and it's going to define one of these three things here. So I think I'm just going to have a run up here and I'm going to hit this enemy with an explosive punch. It's still quite quick, 28. I could pick 82 as my initiative, but I want to clear off. And the fastest they can go is 30. So I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty okay with that. So I'm going to play my cards and say that my initiative is 28. Then we roll the modifier die that has got pluses, minuses, and zeros on it. And the result of this is going to be the initiative of the bandit gods. When you have got more enemy types, they are going to um, have different boards and have different roles for what they're going to do. So they're going into initiative 70, which means our initiative is first. We've got number 28. And so you're going to do the top thing of one and the bottom thing of the other. So bottom thing, I'm going to move first. So out on the map, I'm going to move one, two, three, up to bandit guard number two. And then we have got our explosive punch here. So three damage plus one if target is adjacent to an obstacle, which they are. And you can actually do it to an enemy at range, an enemy within three X's if you are adjacent to an obstacle. So I could have stayed there and, do, and done that, but I want to clear off. So I don't know why I put this cube on the bottom because it goes on the top. This is my modifier. When I'm doing an attack here, we roll the die again. And based on where the cube is, we look at that row, and that's the result of the modifier, same as if we were doing the modifier deck. So unfortunately, I've rolled the minus. That's not good, but it's okay because minus here means minus one. Every time we use the modifier deck, we move the cube down, and if it moves off the bottom, it goes back up to the top. So you can see the different things that might appear and when you might want to time your attacks. You see, not next time, but the time after when we attack, it could be a null, it could be a miss. Uh, well, you don't miss because effects and things will still trigger in Gloomhaven, but any damage would be nullified from the attack. And all the way down here, we might be able to get our doubler. And this is another thing that I don't want to spoil a load of stuff, but another way that level ups are handled in this, see this has got a big one there, that's level one. Each character has got their own modifier cards that will fundamentally change the way that this table works based on their kind of things. You have to represent how you would modify your modifier deck in Gloomhaven as you've got all of the perks and leveled up and stuff. And there is one because when the enemies attack, they're going to be doing the same thing. There are different cards for the enemies based on what difficulty you would like to play as. This is standard difficulty. You can go all the way to very easy. You can go all the way to very hard. So I have attacked. 4, minus 1, it's going to do 3 damage to Bandit 2. We've got these little dials here that are, I'll say, a little bit hard for me to twist. Because each of the sides are the same size. So you've got to kind of get, get hold of one half of it. But it's because the other side is another, like this is 0 to 10, and the other side is above 10. So I've hit the Bandit Guard, and that is it for my attacks. These cards don't stay out, they're not active cards or anything like that, so they just come back to my hand. And we can see now that for next time, I have got this Avalanche. Does three attack to two enemies potentially, standing next to me. Oh, I could do a nice push, and then if they're adjacent to an obstacle, they suffer two damage. That would be great if I can work it so I can push them into a trap. I don't know. Rumbling advance, heal myself, would do a little move and a little attack. We'll see what happens. So next up in initiative is the Bandit Guards, because they're at 70. And so Bandit Guard number one, we go down their list here. He's going to move two and attack for two. Just like in Gloomhaven, they're going to target something. Oh, it's a solo game, so probably going to be after me. Although, like, I wonder if there's, like, summons and stuff for the, the Spellweaver. I can't imagine so. Maybe there is. Let's see, I haven't played the Spellweaver. Uh, so they are not going to choose a path that involves them getting hurt by an obstacle if there's an alternative, even if it takes longer. So they're going to use their two movement, one, two, to get to me. It's not a ranged attack, so it's a swing and a miss from way back there. And then this bandit guard is right next to me, so they're going to get to attack me. 
exact same thing, but they've got their own modifier chart here. So the bandit god is going to roll, they get a minus two. So two attack, minus one is going to do one damage to me. I have got 11 health left. Oh yeah, I'm forgetting the shields, aren't I? Getting so excited. Back here, our guard, no matter what they're doing, has got a shield one. So one of that attack doesn't go through, unless you've got pierce. If they had rolled their minus for their initiative, they would have got an extra shield, but they've always got this one shield. Thanks for noticing that. So we move that cube down as well. That's both of them gone, and that's the round. So we'll now move on. Let's say, like, this is scenario one. Uh, as we move on to the next one, you'll see that, like, as multiple types and multiple things come out, things get more havening. But it's, it's pretty havening right now, isn't it? So I kind of want to save this push or the double attack until I'm in a better position to do that. I don't really need to heal myself. So maybe we'll be going for these two A's. I don't need to move and do three attack, really. Choose an obstacle within three range. Attack three, all enemies adjacent to that obstacle. Well, I could just choose this obstacle and it'll attack him again. The other one is a bit of retaliate. Minus two. Did I mean minus like two at, like as, as as well? Like they rolled a minus as well. They rolled a minus, but on their chart that is a minus one. I think that's what I was trying to say. Hey Jerry. I think. Yeah. I think we're on the same page. So yeah, rock slide. I can choose an obstacle and attack all enemies adjacent to that obstacle. Could keep working on that guard. I could then, well, it's a move and attack. We could just do it and see if it gets through, because if I don't want to use these bits of the card, I could just do a, well, it would just be a move too, so it would be a bit of a waste. I could just give myself retaliate, so if anyone wants to attack me for the rest of the turn, I've got, I would do two damage back to them. If they're within range three, usually they have to be next to you to do that, but I've got a special range on that for the rest of the round. I think, yeah, let's 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 use my other A's. Let's save these. You don't have to. And there are there are these elements over here. So a similar way to Gloomhaven. In Gloomhaven you would make elements, they would go out onto a board and round by round they would diminish until they don't exist anymore. But while they exist, uh, enemies and players could use those elements to enhance their attacks or give them different options. Uh, in Buttons and Bugs, you just need to have the element on a card in your hand or a active card. So if I was to play Avalanche, I have got Rumbling Advance here with the Earth symbol out here. So I would be able to enhance the attack with uh, plus one there because I've got the, the right element to do it. So, yeah, let's do Rock Slide. So we'll say, I'll say Fast again. I'll say 19 as my initiative. It's definitely going to beat them because they're, they're just gods. They're a bit slow on the uptake. They've got their plus again, so more powerful a little bit. Hey, they're just they're just the starting people. So I'm going to go first, and I'm going to start out with... Yeah, choose an obstacle within three range. We're going to say this one that I'm stood next to. All enemies adjacent to the chosen obstacle are attacked for three. So it's just going to be this bandit guard again, and hoping for a plus. A plus would be five, which still isn't enough, but it's, it's closer. I think the retaliate might finish it off. So we've got a zero there. So that's just going to be three damage. It's got one in eight shield. So it's going to take two damage down to four now, if I can turn mid dial. Uh, and then we tick this down. So I might miss my next attack. The guards then go. Number one can move two to be next to me, but He's still not adjacent for his attack, so he can't do anything there. This band... Oh, I didn't move. Did I want to move? I know exactly what they're going to do. I suppose one's going to attack me or the other one. The thing I need to remember is my retaliate's out. If I was willing to take some damage, I could retaliate in these things. No, I'm just going to put my retaliate down and stay over here, so just this guy's going to hit me. So he's going to hit me again, exact same as what happens last round, and they roll a plus 
which is a, a shame because that's going to be two four damage coming in at me. But I have got a heal, haven't I? So that's going to take me down to seven, which well, we'll need the other side anyway, won't we? I don't know why I'm not spinning it like this rather than on the edges. Uh, so they got plus two. I'm down to seven, but I do have retaliate too. So they take two damage and the health doesn't matter on that. The, the shield doesn't matter. Doesn't diminish it. So that's all of that. He's not attacking, so that retaliates done with. They were both on the A side, so I shouldn't be discarding them. I should be putting them back in my hand on their B side. Anything I use now, though, they're all the Bs, so everything's going to discard when I use it from now on. But we have got... Hmm... We've got some ranged attacks and things. Push two. I don't want to push him. I don't want to push him to. I should probably just not zoom in. I don't really want to push him to because he's not in an obstacle. If I could push him, he'd go into an obstacle. So I can move two and then attack for two. And then maybe push next time. And this crater attack is at range. It's at range and it would then push two. So I could maybe move up to this green one, hit him for two, and then hit him for three more and push him. Because if I pushed him right now, I'm pushing him away from the trap. If I get kind of at the side of him, when I push him, I'll be pushing him into that uh, one damage spike trap. So that's something to think about. Or I could just like do this jump move to get behind him. But then there's no push. Yeah, I think Crater and Rumble in advance. I am leaving someone that's on two health who might actually get to attack me and not using the heal. But I'm being confident, perhaps overconfident, because we do know that we're potentially about to miss. That's why I'll do me two attack first. Yes. Oh, but, but my, my, my leaf isn't going to be in my hand, so I won't have it active. I need to not play those together if I want my earth to be in. Hmm. Then really, I want to do a little attack first. We could just empower myself, strengthen myself. So next time I attack, I am at advantage. So I roll the die twice and choose the best thing. Because I don't really want to push just yet. We could do the big jump in as well. We could do the jump in and three damage attack. Next time an enemy enters within two range, it suffers three damage. So if actually, if we jumped away from the blue guy and then it walks towards us, it would suffer three damage from this rock tunnel. And then we would be strengthened for this attack. So more likely to avoid the null. I like that. I'm going to go for that then. So 41 is my initiative. I might not go first, which would be bad. Hopefully they don't roll a minus. Shouldn't have said it. They rolled a minus. Okay, so they're going to be going first for a change. Downside not using me 29, but I wanted the leaf. Well, we might have to use the heal next time. Hopefully they don't kill. It would be an embarrassing first scenario, one of it, wouldn't it? Right, so they just go. So they are moving to... They're only hitting for one, and that should be further down. They're only hitting for one, so guard number one hits for two. So I don't think they can kill me here. And then guard number two is going to hit. Move it down. Guard number two is going to hit me. Minus. One minus one is nothing, but they have a shield now. So yeah, maybe I'm going to regret doing that. We can still get behind one, and um, yeah, at least I've got jump to get out of this, actually. Good point. Then He's not in a... He's still in a good position to hit him away. Yeah, let's use our crater then. Jump out for three. I just want to jump out here, so I'm ready to push him next time. Have I got a push? Yeah, I've got a push on the bottom of this. Heal on the top of this. Perfect. I hope. So jump out, and because we've got earth to use in our hand, 
we can do an attack of three. And, oh, no, first you want to put the rock tunnel out, don't you? So you're strengthened. So till the enemy next turn, we are strengthened. So we get to roll this twice and avoid that null, I hope, unless we roll minus twice. First one, plus. Well, I don't care what the other one is then. I will take plus. Plus, plus. So that is three, four damage. He's got a shield of two, though, unfortunately. So he is only going to take two damage there. Didn't know he was going to get a shield. Didn't know he was going to go first. And because I've played a B card, it gets discarded. This stays out until it's um, activated, or I can choose to recall it. Like, Especially if you rest, you might want to recall it so you've got more cards about. Okay, then. So we're still in this. We've perhaps unwisely switched targets. But if blue tries to get towards us, it might suffer three damage. So probably going to play these two. Do I want to go first? I think I do. Because I can push him away as well. And maybe if he rolls the 50, he might not get back to me. I'll do rumbling advance and avalanche. So I've got 29 as my initiative. Let's see what these are doing. Well, their lowest is 30. So we're going before him. Circle is perfect. He won't get back to hit me. So first of all, let's just heal myself for three. So we're back up to eight health. And then, with Avalanche, we're pushing, aren't we? So I'll push him for two. So each step's got to be further away from you than he was originally. So push him into there. He'll take a damage. Can't shield the, the trap damage. you can push at range one as well. And then we'll push him back there. Then if the target is adjacent to an obstacle, it suffers two damage. So on the one hand, I probably should have finished one off first. But on the other hand, I think one's going to die in a minute. So the enemies... Mm, I see number one, he won't walk through the trap. So this is his closest path. He won't choose to go through the trap. So he's not within two. And this one's going to walk here. He's just walked within two. He suffers three damage. Boom, he is defeated because of my rock tunnel. So that can come back now. And we've got to make a resting decision. So we can either have a short rest and these come back into our hand. We shuffle them up and we're going to lose one at random. Or we can take a long rest. When we get items and things, your items that can reset would reset. You would heal a bit. You would get to choose the card that you lose. But you lose a turn. You'd go at like initiative 99. I think we'll be okay for now. We've just got this three health bandit. So hopefully I'm going to be okay. Just doing a short rest so we can get right back into it. And let's lose that. So we've lost our rock slide, which is a shame. But we've got our explosive punch. He's next to an obstacle. I'm going to have to go up to him. But it would be four damage if we're strengthened still. We lose that at the end of the turn, don't we? So I think I'm still strengthened. Or do we? I don't lose it at the same turn I gain it, do I? So I think I only need two movement to get over there. I've got a range attack, but it's just Dirt Tornado. It's not going to do a lot of damage. It'll muddle him, so he'll find it harder to hit. Let's try and run in with this explosive punch. We've got eight health. There's no need to be afraid. So 28 is my initiative, which is faster than they can go. And circle, they're going at 50 and just moving for one and hit for two. So he wouldn't even make it to me anyway if I didn't want to walk towards him. I'm going to, though. Three movement from the Dirt Tornado. Goes back into my hand as a B. And then Explosive Punch. He's next to an obstacle. He should think about that. I could actually have just moved. Like, hopefully this will finish it off. But I could have just moved one, two, three, couldn't I? He's within range three. Because you can target an enemy within three hexes if you are next to an obstacle. Or even go anywhere near him. So it's going to be an attack for four. Oh, I don't know why I'm looking for a different die. It's the same die. And we get the zero. Four damage. 
plus zero, minus one from their shield. That's going to be three. They are defeated. Hey, I didn't embarrassingly die in scenario one. Hey, Pete, how's it going? Yes, we've uh, made some poor decisions, I think, early on, but we're all right. I think the die's 50-50, right? Yeah, circle, circle, plus, plus, minus, minus. Yeah, it's, uh, well, not 50-50. Well, half of the dice are the three options, is what I mean. It's one in three chance of anything happening. So, we have finished scenario number one, a rude welcome. Well, your gear certainly isn't shiny anymore, and it wasn't even particularly fancy to begin with, come to think of it. Got the job done at least, but your situation is quite dire. You'll need to survive long enough to find out how to restore yourself to original size. But for now, you'll need to deal with the vermling that just appeared. Read The Collector. Where have I put my scenario deck? Here is The Collector. Took out the scavengers, I see. The Vermling offers. You're not the first to barge in on hail and get this less than ideal result. We've all been there. Some of us have realised the need to work together if we're to make the best of this. I assume you'd like to be big again. You nod. Then I have a proposal for you. During my time here, I have collected things that may be useful. You may borrow them and, ex and in exchange, I will accompany you so I may expand my collection. I can also tell you that your best hope for escape is getting into the crooked bone and taking the issue up with hail. Unfortunately, you look behind you to see the door now firmly closed. Yeah, the only way in is through Button's Kingdom across the road. Come on. You can now equip items during scenario setup. Play scenario two, crossing the road. So items, all of these pages that we have been going through so far, at the top and bottom, have got items on them. So we have got two hands with which to hold items, and we have got one pouch slot. So you can see we have got options here. We can use an element to add a pierce to an attack. And the, the only things we can put in hands are, are on either side of this card. So you can obviously only use one item uh, per card. Or we could have Venomous Fang during your melee attack add a poison. And that taps. And if you long rest, it will come back. This is just permanent. So whenever we've got an element available that we don't particularly want to use for anything, it's Frost or... Frost or Earth? Well, we make Earth, so that would be okay. I do like the idea of having poison take more damage. I think I'm going to go for the Rose Thorn Knife. So there is a space underneath your character with which to equip these items. So you can see at the bottom here what we've got. So then the other options, we've got Bottle, Cap, Helm. During an enemy's attack, treat its plus as a zero when it rolls for its modifier. During your attack, gain advantage. Shrunken Weathered Boots during your movement add one, or Old Spring during your turn add jump to all your movements. I think we can only have one pouch thing right now. During your attack, gain advantage. I think. So, all of this resets, and you go back to your A cards. And you would look for scenario two, because he's straight away, it's another level one scenario, so no need for level ups or anything like that. Not strengthened anymore. And let's see what it says. Scenario two, crossing the road. You can get into a window in the Crooked Bone by zip lining across from the grumbling Garalev, the collector says. They point to another derelict tavern in front of you, otherwise known as Button's Kingdom. The collector hesitates, gesturing to a small crowd of bandits on the cobblestone street blocking your path. Monsters, Bandit Guard, and Bandit Archer. Goal, defeat all monsters. So we can set it up, you know, similarly to how we did the first time. We have got guards again, that, uh, well, guard, that is number one. So we can set their health. I'm sorry for moaning about the dials earlier on, and when we were playing solo, that actually you just... Why are you doing it with the edges? You can just do it like this really easily. Tough day. So two and three are actually going to be bandit archers. So I need, which move them over actually, and pop the bar, the archers here. So number one is a guard and the archers have seven health and no defense. One there and I need dial number three. Seven health, 
they need a cube as well. And they, their cubes need to go out onto the board. So blue there, three there, and us there. But should we? Now, like in the game, you're meant to just go through a, a campaign as the same character. Because, you know, the story with, with this character going through this journey. For the purposes of this stream, though, would you like to see a different character as well? Not as well, because it's a solo game. But would you like to see someone else instead? Or would you like to see more Crackheart? I said that the Crackheart will be doing the same stuff, just in a different uh, environment, different enemy than that. We could be the Bruiser, Tinkerer, Mind Thief, Silent Knife, or Spell Weaver. If you'd like me to change, you can see the complexities. Bruiser, another one that's like very straightforward to play. And I have been, I haven't been the Spell Weaver and the Tinkerer, the, the high complexity ones. But I'm sure they do some uh, funky things. They probably want to try and keep away from their enemies as well, rather than just charge at them and leave enemies alive with like just two health at a time. <laughs> and punch. That's how we get through these scenarios. With bugs break across these bandits, exactly. I, get, I think the, the story would be over far too quickly, though, if we get access to that. Maybe that's the last item in the game, and it wins you the final scenario. Because these are, of course, like I didn't say at the start, these are the Crack Hearts cards. And if you play as a different character, we've also got the, the Crack Hearts improved things. But they've all got their own set of action cards. Should we give the Spell Weaver a go? Do I want to change then what I'm taking? Spell Weaver for instant death. Let's give this a go. This is where we need Rach for her, all of her Spell Weaver expertise. Maybe we want to add jump to movement in case they find themselves penned in. And let's see what the Spell Weaver's got available to them then. So, level one cards. Have a look at their text. The spell weaver draws upon elemental energies, crafting them into devastating attacks. The process is exhausting, but the ether can also renew their stamina, giving them the longevity they need, so long as they can avoid enemy attacks. There are archers trying to stop us avoiding those attacks. So let's see what we've got here. More symbols. So fire orbs, we can have fire available straight away. So if we played Dancing Gales first, we'll be able to strengthen ourselves. Attack three, up to three targets at range three. Can we make ice? Oh yeah, we, we can still make um, we can still make ice. Oh, if we did these two, we would have both elements for this because the elements would be back here. It's a thought. I don't know, but. We then wouldn't be a arcane bolt wouldn't be very useful, right? So yeah, attack, attack for three, three people at range three. But this is a lost card. If you use that ability, that card's done. Move four on the bottom, dancing gales. If you have fire in your hand or your active area, you can strengthen yourself. Then attack for two at range three. Then if you have ice, attack for two at range three and muddle which is uh, put them at disadvantage. They have to roll twice and take the worst result. And a move three and attack for three at range three, but it's a lost card. Freezing Nova. While it's in our hand, it's given as ice. Does two attack, target the two enemies closest to you within three hexes and muddle them. Might be good. Oh, we need a different uh, mini as well, don't we? It's the spell weaver. There's the spell weaver. Or we can play the bottom to add retaliate one and shield one permanently. But that is losing a card doing that. Arcane Bolt, an attack of two at range three. Use any element to add one attack to it. And bottom, heal three self and use an element to add plus one damage to all your attacks this round. Especially when you, if, if we had needed to heal, that would be a really nice combo, wouldn't it? the bottom of this and the top of this, because we could use one of the elements of this and use the other element to add plus one. Like we could use the frost 
so that there's two attacks, and we could use the fire, both still in our hand, to add plus one to the attacks this round. It's a bit risky, I suppose, because that's our heal, and we're more squishy. Like, it would be nicer to wait, but on the other hand, like, you're making the elements go away. Can you spoil the B-sides? They're what they will turn into. And of course, oh, I'm forgetting the, the fundamental thing about the Spellweaver. We did, Gloomhaven was a, a few years ago for us. But yeah, the, the Spellweaver's got loads of lost cards, haven't they? But they have the ability once to bring back all of the cards in their lost pile. So it's not like absolutely terrible to use to lose these things, actually, is it? To do the lost stuff. You could do a couple and then get this to the B side, lose another card on this side, perhaps. Yeah, like Icy Blast you could lose. You could like do a crazy big start. Top of this, bottom of this, lose them both. Then you play this the next turn. Then they're flipped over. Play that and lose it. Oh no, that's the top though, isn't it? Okay, you can't quite do it like that. But you can get some lost cards back is the point. So yeah, I'm tempted to do that, but I'm a bit wary of making it harder to heal because the other sides of these don't have heal. Oh, this side's got a heal on it. It wouldn't be the worst thing, would it? They're right next to us. The Let's have a look at the map. So that's the guard. One, two, three. It's within three range. These are both within three range. We could attack them both with the fire orbs. For three, which is kind of the same effect, isn't it? I suppose that the advantage of this attack would be that it would muddle. You've got to be able to play two cards, haven't you, as well? Right, have these got losses on the other side? Oh, this one, this Icy Blast would lose on the top as well. So yeah, you could play those to lose them. Play these on their A sides. Now, oh, but it's on the top. There's no loss on the bottom on this side, is there? Just trying to think of a way of losing three cards and then still being able to retrieve them, but probably thought about that. So let's have a big attack then, probably. Reach our experienced Spellweaver will be telling me I'm being too cautious about me, um, me Spellweavering. But yeah, let's do Dancing Gales and Arcane Bolt. I could strengthen myself. Maybe that's better than having plus one to the attacks. I could strengthen myself and have two attacks. They're only doing two damage each, but... Maybe strengthening's better to get the pluses. But at the same time, plus one will negate the minus ones if they happen, won't it? You're not moving away. That, that mind you, the 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 archer will be able to attack back. They've got range two. You're not moving away. Should we be moving away? Too much uh, over an iron going on here, isn't there? Right, I'll move back afterwards. We'll have a bit of a runaway. We can always just like, it's kind of losing a card this way, isn't it? That this stays up here forever. And when you want to retrieve it, it's lost. So it's just for the rest of the scenario, a shield and a retaliate. We could just use it for its two movement, couldn't we? Yeah, let's play these two cards. My initiative is 21. That's the fastest we can go. We're just going to have to hope the archers aren't really quick. So the bandit guard, they are going at 0, 50. Bandit archer, they are going at plus 64. So stronger, 3 attack in 3 range, but they're not moving. And so, while we're in front, we will use the flame to strengthen. And we will use the frost to do this extra attack. 
So first of all, should we just try and burst down this archer? Oh yeah, that's the archer, that's the god. So let's attack the archer for two damage, but we are strengthened, so we can roll this twice and get the best bit, but we've rolled a, a plus to begin with, so that's okay. So three damage on the archer. It's number two, the blue, isn't it? And... Now I'm regretting not uh, adding plus one to the attacks, but I want to move away. We'll attack, the, we'll attack the archer again then. Another two damage at three range, and we're strengthened again. Oh, plus, and the other one. Just, uh, there we go, plus on camera this time. So it moves down. Th that kills it, doesn't it? Two, plus two from the modifier. That's four. That is an archer dead straight away. And we don't have to worry about them so much. And then I was going to move with this. So he's going to move one towards us. So we only need to be one away. So we just move two and go this way around because they're not going to move. We need to get to them eventually. He's going to come in, but we can usually attack at range three and he won't walk into things. So we can maybe dance him around this rock a little bit. Yeah. So we've used those two cards. They go to A's. And then let's see initiative. The guard's next at 50. So he's going to move one towards us and attack for two, but they're not ranged. And then the archer is going to attack us for three at range three, but nope, we're nowhere near there. Only the first two will have them move a bit as well. So we are okay. We have avoided attacks, which I think is our, our remit. The second attack would have muddled the archer result, but they were killed. So next up... I've got my retrieval card. I've got my Ember Frost here. Attack for three at three range, and I can disarm them with Frost. Ooh, that's nice. Think how far away. If I could move three, I could get within range of them. And the, but the God could come up to me actually with two of their three moves. So, maybe if you're going to do it on anyone, do it to the God and let them slowly walk towards us. So that attacks two enemies, and that's not as good. This is a four-range attack. Gain advantage on all your attacks this round. Also, we could. Fire would still be in my hand. We could do this. Attack the two enemies closest to you within three hexes. Okay, it's only going to attack one guy. And this is attack two at range four. We wouldn't be moving is the risk. But he would be muddled. I could probably take one attack. I'm going to go for it. Watch him get like plus 10 or something. I'm going to play these. So I'll, we're very slow though as well. But yeah, we're, we're slow anyway. That's just the fact. That's the fastest card that I've got. 61. Go for it. Hope that they roll a plus. So the guard, minus, <laughs> in at 30. Smaller hit, but they've got shields. And then the archer might move. Yes, they will move one towards us, but not be in range. So everyone's going before us. The guard is going to move two. One, two. Hit us for one. Let's do their modifier. Zero. So one. I've got no armor or anything. I should put this out now, but I, I wouldn't have had a chance yet. Then the archer is going to move one towards us, same rules, and attack for two damage at range three, too far away. So not too bad, just taking one damage. But the things that I'm doing, we're just standing here. You could do the opposite side and disarm him, but oh, you're at disadvantage as well for ranged attacks, aren't you, as well? I was hoping that I would go first. I suppose it was unlikely, looking back. You could just hit him normally. I suppose I'm strengthened, though. If I'm at disadvantage, it just cancels out, doesn't it? I didn't need to gain advantage because I'm already at advantage, aren't I? Oh, you amateur Gloomhavener.
Yeah, so we'll just be at nothing, won't we? We're at advantage and disadvantage, so we'll just be at normal. So we're just attacking him for two twice, aren't we? Unless we want to use this to move away. Let's see what the first one does. And we'll muddle him for next time. So plus, plus one. So that's three damage. He's got one armor, so two damage. And he is muddled. And then, I mean, we've got moves. I've got a jump, even. Could do a big attack and then a jump. But then this goes in my discard, and we could potentially lose this when we rest. Let's get, get rid of the things first, though. Oh, yeah. Are you going to attack him another time? I don't really want to move towards this. I'm going to attack him again. So this will go into lost. And we get plus. Brilliant. Plus one. Won't be advantage next time. So three more damage coming in, but he's shielded. So two more damage. He's down to four. And we're no longer strengthened. And that's everybody, because they went first, didn't they? So now we've got Icy Blast. Could he, we've only taken one damage. We haven't got Light to use to heal one and strengthen. So we could use it for a big attack. Move away and then do a big attack. Again, fairly slow. So we're probably going to get hit first. But then we'll be able to move away four, which should be a little bit. Or you just use this to move two, one, two, three, and you'd be able to hit both of them with this. But then you're in range of both of them. And you're only a spell weaver. But nothing in my lost pile yet. Again, probably been too cautious with that. Could just use its four jump to. No, I've not lost Ember Frost. It's uh, it's in my discard pile because it was already on its B side. So if you play it on its B side, B side, it goes into your discard. It would muddle him again as well. Like if he does go first, he is a bit muddled. So maybe he would not do very much damage. Will miss me entirely. Nothing uses fire, unfortunately, and fire doesn't help me. Mind you, I can just add jump to my movement anyway and keep that about. Go on then. 66, Icy Blast, Fire Orbs for moving, and we could jump with it. We'll do that. Right, so I'm 66. The Bandit Gods are at 50, which is a heavier hit, unfortunately, for me. You let yourself get clo too close. And the archers are at 64, so they're just going to stay up there, not doing anything. Miles away. Just too enticed by that apple. So it is the guard first is going to hit me for two, but is muddled. So we will roll twice. So they get a plus and a minus. So a minus. So they actually do one damage. Could be worse. So... I am going to do my four jump, so use my item, one, two, three, four, we're still within three range, I would love to be hitting loads of people with this, but our icy blast is going to be for four damage, I would love to be strengthened as well, at least we're not on miss, if this was, if this is a hit, that's going to be amazing, but four damage, and he wouldn't be muddled because he's had his turn, but he's about to get muddled again, come on plus. About time? No, it was a zero. Uh, so it's, that's still four damage. He's got one shield, so he is down to one health. That's a lost card. And then that was, we, we've already used its jump, so that was an A. So we can move three. We're just going to get to move three and retrieve the lost card, I suppose. The other ones add plus one to all of your attacks. Oh, and that stays out as well. Oh, that's very nice. 
could just do that and run away again. Hmm. Yeah, not in love with what we're going to be doing here. So we could just move and retrieve the card. We've not got a great turn. I've not lined up a great turn for us here. So the archer will just try and hit. There's no movement on their thing. And... Yeah, I don't want to move up and attack. I suppose I could do it very slowly. I could wait until they have gone, because they can't get in range of me, even with two movements. I could wait till they've gone, and I could just use these for normal attacks. I can jump over and then hit them for two, but then next time they're going to be next to me. But next time I might have a heal. I kind of want to be. I don't want to rest right now because I would just. Well, this would come into my hand and then I would lose a card. So it's a bit of a change from Gloomhaven. You want to play the cards, really. It's just the, the stuff I've given to myself. Is a bit rubbish, really. But we could kill him though, couldn't we? He's only got one elf. What are you worried about? Go on then. 91 and we'll just use these for the normal sides. Bandit Guard is going at plus. Bandit Archer is going at zero. So we'll get a little bit closer. And we're going at 91. So first them, they'll move... What's closest? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Either way, it's fine. And then attack at range three. They're too far away. This guy is going to move two and then try and hit, but he's one away from me. And so, yeah, rather than leave these out, I'm just going to play them for their normal attack. So a two attack and a two move. I could do a four jump still. Maybe I will. I'm going to jump behind him. Why not? And then just do a two attack and hope that I don't get a minus. Minus would be bad. Zero is fine. Two damage. Minus one is dead for the bandit god. So we have just got a full health archer to deal with, but I think we're very safe to long rest. They were both bees, weren't they? They can go into the discard. So I am going to long rest. So my initiative's 99. That'll let us heal up a bit. We'll get the jumping thing back. Did I have 10 health to the start? Or did I set it at eight? I feel like I set it at eight. And I get my boots back. I can't remember. Right, so these come back into my hand. The archer's going to go at some kind of speed. Zero, they're going to move one towards me. One, two, three, four, just out of range. Well, I knew that they couldn't move to. And then we've got to lose something. So I think, well, we want to loot. Definitely don't lose the one that's got regain your lost cards on the other side. Lose one of these. And then you don't want to play the lost version of the card you're going to play next time. But you could just do the Arcane Bolt. We wouldn't have any elements because they're all getting discarded. So that's just, a two, that's just one attack. So that's just one attack. At least that one's got range. We'll keep these. And we've got a speed 21 back. Yeah, so you're lost again. And then our turn. We've got to play these cards. So we'll go at speed 21. So now I want to be slow, don't I? I kind of want to go behind. Oh, if she moves, though, she'll. Be... if she does zero again, she'll move and get in range and hit me. I don't need healing. So whatever it is, we're just going to do a two attack at range, aren't we? I'll go at 26. If she goes first, she won't um, be able to hit me. So hoping for a minus on this. Plus, she's going at 64. Going to hit for three at three range. Well, now I don't want to get in range.
Like, I don't want to heal myself. I've got 10 health, though. Do you know what? Let's just move one. There's no point getting in two range in case she rolls that. Night. Mind you, she'll be able to move one. And then we'll hit her for two at range three. Hoping for a plus zero. Two damage. She's got no shields. So onto five health. And that resets back up to the top. Then their bees. Next time. Still gets to do a ranged attack and then we'll retrieve these lost cards. The archer is going to hit me for three. Hoping for a minus. Oh, that would have been a miss, but it's a plus one instead. Four damage. But well, that's still leaving us on six. Then. We're slow. We're slower than they can possibly go, so we're just hoping for not a plus, but they roll a plus. So they're hitting for three. It's not at the double yet. A plus again, that's four damage. Oh dear. We'll get our fast card back next time, won't we? These will come back on their A-sides. 61, 69. So I want to retrieve my lost cards to their A-side. So I've got more options again. Do I need to run away? Because if they're, if they're going to go first again, and I can't be hit for another three, it could double me. I, I need to... I haven't got my heal, ever. It's on the other side of one of these. So we've got to... That's a good point, actually. Can you still lose a card to block it? A lot of Gloomhaven is um, relevant to this. I don't think they've changed a load of fundamental stuff. So there are like, and I didn't realize until uh, I looked in the forums for the first time today, that uh, there's a lot of contention about the the rules not being in the box. There's just a learn to play in there. Because if you've seen the rules to Gloomhaven, it would be very hard to fit the rules of Gloomhaven in this box. Would it be damage? Where's damage? Oh, there's no index in alphabetical order. Suffer damage. There we go. No, that's suffering damage, isn't it? So I don't know if we've got a card to lose if we can do that. I can't see it in the table of contents. Sort of round effects. Character damage, there it is. Yes, you can still do that. You can discard one A side card, two B side cards, or you can lose a card from your discard pile to um, negate damage coming in. So what are you saying if um so I've got these two cards now, haven't I? That I'm playing now. So that'll be lost, that'll be discarded. I'll retrieve these two. I won't have anything to lose, will I? So we've really only got the A's of these, the B's of these. We can rest. Yeah, it's not all lost, but I think I've got to move away. Because they're gonna go first. Instead of doing a lovely attack four, attack two at range four. These A's are slow. I've got to move away. One, two, three range. I can move two away. That might hold me back, though, when I want to do attacks. But I've got no heals on these cards. So yeah, retrieve your A-side cards, and then that's in my discard again. Oh, dear. We will go slower, so if they move... I'm going to have to move in to fight them, but then I will get potentially this back, which might make me go quicker. I think we're in danger of losing this, which then you just have to do the scenario again. I can get a shield, but that's not going to help me as much, is it? Ideally, they move in one, 
they'll still be four away. And these are range three attacks. Well, these are what we're playing. Let's see what they're... We don't have to decide what we're doing yet. They're going at 31, moving in for one, and doing a two damage attack at range three. So, my option is I can walk in and do a two damage attack, and then hope... I can't do nothing again, can I? I mean, I can give myself Retaliate and Shield, but it's a bit late. Maybe we attack two and muddle them, hoping that they miss, but they'll only get minus one, and hope that the rest doesn't make us lose the card we really want, because I don't think we can do a, a long rest and still have the stuff to do anything with. Yeah, let's do that. So we'll move in, and do two a two attack and muddle. Plus, so that's a three attack, it's got two health left, and it's muddled. And then flip to the Bs. Oh yeah, we don't, we're not resting straight away, are we? Hi Rach, we might be dying. I'm, uh, I'm the Spellweaver. You're not skilled enough in the Spellweaver. No, we need to stick to the low complexity. So I'm going at 25. If they don't roll a minus, and we get lucky with the attack, I think we're okay. But watch them roll a minus. Yep. Oh, door. So now, they are at... Oh, they're not at range 2. They have to come in at range 2. And we have got a hope here that they roll a minus, or we're dead. They are muddled. They get a 0, which kills us. And a 0, which unfortunately... No, shouldn't. The the Spellweaver was too ambitious for us. I have failed. If they had rolled anything other than the zero, then, yeah, we were about to do a big four attack. And even the minus would have killed it. That's unfortunate. But I think that we're going to have to say, like, usually, yeah, they're muddled, so we roll it twice, but they rolled circle twice. So we do the worst option out of um, out of two rolls, but they just rolled the same thing twice. And another one. <laughs> they would need to be four times they rolled it. There's the minus. Yeah, we just have to assume we're in another reality where they rolled a minus and we managed to succeed because I'd like to do at least another scenario. Yeah, probably one more scenario. Just show because these are all like introductory ones. Yeah. Would you like to, oh yes, please. Would you like to show us how the spell weaver is really yeah. supposed to be played, Rach? Yeah. I don't think I was brave enough to lose cards early on. So who shall we be? We've done Cragheart. We've been Spellweaver. Who would you like to look at for the the third scenario with an asterisk? Because I lost. And I'll have a look at the story in the meantime. Standing on the other side of the street before the towering, grumbling Garilev, the collector clears their throat. Honestly, it's probably best to avoid Button entirely. Very eccentric. I recommend sneaking in through a crack in the wall. If you are the bruiser, you must play Scenario 4, barging in. Any others, uh, you play Scenario 3, in the walls. So this will affect your decision. If you choose the Bruiser, I will go to the Bruiser scenario. And again, if you're just joining us late, in Buttons and Bugs, you pick a character and you play through this campaign. Just for the purposes of this stream and the purposes of showing off as much as possible, I'm, uh, I'm swapping and changing and continuing when I lost. For the purposes of just showing some stuff off. Only Rach can weave spells properly. It is true. Rich got us through many a scenario as the spell weaver with the crag heart, especially when you level up the crag heart. You can say that about loads, like pretty much everyone we played in uh, Gloomhaven and Frosthaven, but the crag heart will always have that special spot of being the the proper starting character. Favorite is still the the two mini character. We're so good. So what do you reckon then? Should we swap to someone else? 
Like the Bruiser is another low complexity one, but it would take us to a different scenario. You see, it, it branches based on uh, the people that we are, even for scenario three. Although we're potentially not doing scenario three. You can have a look at their complexities. So the Bruiser and the Silent Knife are low. The Mind Thief medium. The Tinkerer, hard. Like, I like the idea of just barging in. And we probably have to be a bit sneaky if we were any of the other people. But who would you like to see? We've already done the Cragheart and the Spellweaver. But to show off somebody else, or all the die. Where's my die? I had to use one for something yesterday. Here we go, we've got the the official gaming rules die. We need a number between one and four, please. Four, it's going to be the bruiser. I was numbering them one, two, three, four. The bruiser is the, the recommend, like, it's not the recommended one, but the, the character that the learn to play uses. So we've got another option of an item. Drop of power potion during your turn, add plus one attack to all your attacks, but then it's gone. During your turn, you can use frost or wind to remove a negative condition. Well, that will we be using elements? The bruiser is in this pile. It's still. Let's see. So it's going to be scenario four. Oh, this is a level two scenario, so I'll be able to show you some other things now. So our starting cards as the bruiser. For level two, we can change one of the cards into its level two version, because this is a level two scenario. And we will be able to use... Where is the bruiser? There's the bruiser. The bruiser's level two modifier table. So let's see, shield bash. So three attack and a shield and four move would become four attack and a shield, four move and two retaliate for the round. Oh, and that shield you can leave out forever. Removable, right? And skewer becomes run through, adds pierce to its stuff and an extra attack if you're using wind, which you just make, and an extra shield. See, like the upgraded versions of the cards. We could upgrade leaping cleave into trample. Extra damage and some pierce. Oh, and a bigger shape. And a jump of four instead of three. And attack all the enemies you moved through with the jump. One retaliate becomes two. Heal two becomes heal three. And add two damage to all of your attacks this round. A spare dagger becomes hook and chain. Three attack into four. And it gains pull two. Hook and And two attack becomes three. Pierce one becomes pierce two. And change six attack into eight. And instead of add one to all your attacks this round, this can stay out as plus one to all your attacks forever. But you're losing a card to do that. And then warding strength uh, can, instead of just targeting one person, can target a big shape. And strength and self, instead of just shield two, move two, then shield two. And then the top attack, four becomes five, and bleed and immobilize. And then... We add Immobilize to the bottom of here as well. I quite like... So I don't know what we're going to be up against here, really. But I feel like there's going to be a lot of people. I like the idea of upping this or trampling through a load of people. Has to be trample. Yeah. I like the idea of that. So we'll level up that. We've got his level 2 thing in there. And let's have a look at the scenario, then. The idea of sneaking anywhere just makes you angry. And when you're angry, you just want to bust some heads. You decline the collector's offer in favor of a more direct approach. You march right toward the guards at the, tor at the door, weapon in hand. Monsters, bandit guard, bandit archer, defeat all monsters. Make those cards back. They're uh, discarded. Uh, 
That is it. So when you do a level three scenario, you'll get to pick two of those cards to replace them. Oh, why am I discarding that? Because the scenario is on the other side of it. So we are going to need number one and two are archers. So number one is the green. And they've got seven health. Other side, please. And then number two is also an archer. Seven health. That's number three. And then number three and four are guards. And they've got eight health. And I think, oh, we need to do our health as well. Level two bruiser, that's going to be 13 health. And I think we're good to go. So the way they're stood at the moment, a jump of four isn't going to get us in very far. I'd like them to come up to us a bit more or get closer to us and move through a load. Or get them into a nice shape so we can trample them all. Oh, where are we? I haven't even put myself on yet. We're back here. So we can't quite get to this archer. Move of four could get us to that archer. Although we've got spare dagger here, we could hurl this dagger at the archer over there. And get shield too. Mind you, what's going to get to us? The guards aren't going to get to us. It's just this archer's going to be attacking. Because this, this archer's going to have to take the long way of coming through. Because they're not going to walk through the trap, are they? Well, that's alright then. And they can start coming towards me and I'll... Uh, I'll jump at them. Yes, yeah, so let's use our spare dagger to fling at this archer and shield two. So we're going at 27, not the fastest. The gods are going at zero. The archers are going at zero. So I'm actually fastest. I'm only attacking for two and I've got shield of two. So let's pop that up there. We could just leave that there forever if we wanted as well. So we're attacking for three. We've got our modifier deck up there. Minus, unfortunately, so two damage on Archer number one. Then it's Archer's next. So this one is going to... It's not going to move because they're in range. So they're going to attack me for two using their modifier. Minus. Attack me for one. I've got shield two. Tough luck. This Archer can start to move, but... Only got one move. Then the bandit guards, first of all, it's purple, move one towards me, and then red will move one towards me a bit. Oh, they're starting to get into a shape. Actually, they're in the trample shape, aren't they? Thanks, Rach. But I would need jump. Have we got our items equipped? Did we have? I've just got the stuff that I had last time. Did I choose any items? Did I choose plus one to all of the attacks? I can't remember what I talked about. If you want to do the big jump and move through a load of people, but it might not be the easiest. So we have got elements. Let's poison them, add one damage to them. Picking my items a bit late. Did I pick them and then put them in a pile? So we've done my stuff, haven't we? That comes back as a B. Also, we have got a six attack if we're willing to lose it. Or three move and add one to all of your attacks this round. Getting in with this, yeah. I'm going to go 15. I'm going to leave the shield up for now.
We're going to go 15 and get in and try and trample, I think. Because the god won't be able to get to us. It would be great. So the gods are going to go minus at 30. The archers are going to go 31. But I am going 15. I probably just forgot about items. So shield bash. We are using its four jump. We're using its four movement. And we are going to jump. One, two, three out of the four we'll use. So we're in the middle of these. And then we will trample. So that goes on B. And so we can attack both of these with PS2. So ignore two armor. Well, these are a bit too high up, aren't they? Sorry about that. I got everything uh, off the screen, didn't I? Setting everything up. I'm used to having to use this entire table. The, from, a, from a video boy's perspective, I wish every game was uh, miniature and could fit this zoomed in. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, too much fun looking at the level two cards. So let's say purple, the which is a god, isn't it? It's a god and an archer. So the god first. Well, this is our second attack, isn't it? So we will attack the god first, the purple one, with a plus. So that's plus one. That's going to be five damage. And we are ignoring armor. That's an A-side, so that comes back, and that's it. Oh, and then I've, I haven't finished the whole thing yet. And then we're attacking the blue archer for four damage. Could potentially be six. It's a zero, so plus zero, but pierce one. It's already got pierce. So four damage to the blue archer. Yeah, that was just an A-card, so that comes back to us. And I'm going to leave that up there. So next up is the gods. Move two towards me. Well, at the moment, they are blocked out, aren't they? So I suppose he he would come this way, and he would walk on a trap next time if everyone's still in this position. But he wouldn't right now. God 3 would go first anyway, and hit me for 1 and then get 1 shield, but it's too late. Hit me for 1, plus 2, 3, but I've got 2 shield, so 1 damage. And then, who else? Oh, the archers. So the archer wants to be in within range three. The green one is, so won't move. And it's a zero, so that is two damage. I've got two shield. And the blue one will move away now that I've jumped in, so they're not at disadvantage. And hit me for two. Minus, minus one, one damage, two shield. So at this point, should I bring that back? So I'm not running out of cards. I could do it next time, couldn't I? It would come back as a B. I think so. Let's leave it as it is now. So what could I do right now? The skewer they're not really lined up for. Give myself retaliate. Maybe I do, what would it come back as on B? A four attack, move three and muddle all adjacent enemies. I could muddle both of the. That'd be a guard and an archer, wouldn't it? Up there. I could muddle them and then just hit them. Yeah, they're tiny cards. This is tiny Gloomhaven. They're like mini Euro. I don't. I don't want to speak gospel in case you're a sleeper. Going off Gloomhaven, I would assume these are mini Euro cards. These are the standard sized cards the scenario cards and the character card and these cards are like mini European size cards. It's miniature Gloomhaven. So you're you're a shield, you're staying there, aren't you? Right. You need to move down as well. Hmm. The options aren't amazing. I can give myself another shield. I am next to someone to hit him. I could just hit him for two, couldn't I? Or I could do a big... Mm, a hit of six is a bit much on him. I could just give myself retaliate and another shield. We'd have to lose some cards. But we'd lose that next time. Do you know what? Go for it. 
That's what we'll do. So 20. They might go before me before I've got this stuff up, before you put it up there. Guards are going at zero. And archers at minus... Ah, archers are going quicker. I've still got two shields, but... Yeah, they're going to miss the retaliate, which is a shame. It was a good idea in principle, but archers always roll in that minus. So they're going to go first. It's first of all, the green archer needs to be within range two, so they're going to walk up to me a little bit, which is a bit dangerous for them. They've got two attack. Oh, they've doubled up though. Four damage, two shield, two damage. And then this archer is fine, so two damage coming in. Plus, oh, now they can't roll the minuses. Uh, they do three more damage, two shield is uh, going to bump us onto the other side for nine. All right, it's, it's, uh, it's great. So, that's them done, then it's us. So we can put this in, but we're just going to get like, we're going to retaliate against those guys, I suppose. We, we can change it up. You don't have to stick with that. We could just walk up to the archer and hit them for three. Which, do you know what? I've decided I want to do more. As much as I want Retaliate 2 and stuff up, you do have to be adjacent for that. It would both just take two straight damage. And probably not hit because of all the shield. And then we could just bring this back for next time. Yeah, do it still. Stick with your plan. So Retaliate 2 and another shield. So, guard number 3 is going next and he's going to hit me for 2. Plus again. And this is looping around into three. So, oh, I've got three shield. And retaliate two. So guard three takes two damage. Then... The, the other one is going to step in. One move. It's got a gap now. And hit me for two. Come on. And get plus zero. Two damage. Doesn't get through but they take two damage. Just good. Bypasses the shields. So now I think we're going to have to bring one back so we've got cards to play next time. And I'm fairly happy with that, actually. And muddle all adjacent enemies against some nice... Like, we're next to quite a few. Still got a shield of one. Still got to retaliate if I'm adjacent. I probably just want to move and up my attack and do a great big attack. Maybe on this... Archer. Yeah, I'm slow though. 61's going to be my speed. Gods, minus, going fast and getting some shields. But I'm planning on attacking the archers. So again, it's 64, slower than me. So the gods first. Move two, attack one, shield one. Starting with purple. Move one, attack one. Zero, so they're just attacking for one. I've got a shield of one and a retaliate of two, so you have killed yourself. Yeah, that's purple. I'm getting confused with the colours. And then red is going to hit me for one. Miss. Our first null. And they get retaliated, but they have got a shield should I choose to attack them. I am going to go first, so this one isn't even going to move, and hopefully this one's going to be dead. I am going to walk up. Move up to three, add one to your attacks this round. I'm going to attack for five, and cross my fingers. Minus, minus two, but strength and self. Okay, well, we'll be strengthened next time. Where have I put me strength and tokens? I had them earlier. Oh well, grab another one. So, three damage. That's unfortunate. I had to mobilize them. I've got Retaliate, but they're not going to be next to me. So they get discarded. We can bring these back. Oh, if I bring them back, they're going to get discarded, which I probably want to do. We're probably going to have to have a short rest, aren't we? So, still got the archers to go. Green first. Oh, can't move. So they're going to stand next to me at disadvantage and get retaliated against. Brilliant. So, zero, three damage coming in. 
Oh, disadvantage, please. Plus, okay, zero. Three damage coming in. I've got a shield, so that's two coming in. And then you stood next to me, so that is two damage coming back. Archer is dead. Great. So I think we should now bring these down and not have retaliate and a shield anymore and have a little short rest. And yeah, short rest means we're going to randomly lose one. That's not very interesting if you were... Sorry if you were expecting bigger cards. It's like, it's, it's miniature Gloomhaven. It's, it's in a, a tiny version of the, the Gloomhaven box. Right, so we're losing the top thing. You can still take a damage and lose something else. It's a nice one. But... And it's our jump as well, isn't it? I don't know if it's worth losing an enemy. One, two, three, four... Yeah, if you if you long rest, you still get to like refresh your stuff. You get to choose the card that you have. Oh yeah, the, we're we're strengthened as well. So I'm not next to somebody, unfortunately. Love to be next to someone. I mean, shield bash, hit him and get a shield. I've got to walk up to someone. Actually, I've got my spare dagger. Do you know what? Spare dagger, warding strength, speed 27, and we can get shields again. But if you do shield bash, which I know you don't need the movements, but if you did shield bash, you'd go at 15 faster than anyone before that archer has a chance to hit. You've convinced me. Done. So gods are going at 50. Archer is going at 16. Ha ha. 15. I'm going to spare dagger that archer. Attack of three. A minus would be bad, but we are strengthened. A minus would be bad, wouldn't it? We're strengthened. Ah, minus. I don't know that happened last time. We should be down, which is no better. That is a null. So a complete miss from there. <laughs> and then I'm just going to one, two, three. I'm running off them. So they come back as bees. Oh dear. So. I was hoping that strength would come to my aid there. Then they come. They will move one. Uh, they can't really get closer to me. I suppose they'll start to move around the outside. Range two. Nope. Can't do anything. And then. The guard will move one towards me, but can't get close. Okay. Oh, so close to skewer. Being in the right position, but it's never going to be because they could move a lot quicker. We're going to... Overwhelming Assault and Warding Strength. I'm going to come over here and push him to if I get to do this I'm going to go at 61 if he goes first and comes up to me he might get a hit in but I'll just push him up to this trap instead I'm going to go 61 right yeah just just like Gloomhaven <laughs> Null is still just as in the way and zero for the archers so the archers are going at 31 they're first step in a bit oh no I should have foreseen this. Now the skewer's perfect. <laughs> Watch. If I'd have gone skewer, though, they'd have rolled something else. They'd have rolled 64 and not moved. Oh, now they're in the perfect skewer position. I don't want anyone to move. I can't, I can't change my mind. No. So that's them at 31. Not in three range, so they can't hit me. I am 30. No, I said 61, didn't I? So now they're coming out of skewer. Dumb. Can't attack me. I am just going to move here, add plus one to all of your attacks, attack for three plus one, so four, and I'm going to push him into a trap if this doesn't work. Minus, so attack him for three. Oh, it's not pierced though, that's still not going to kill him. Attack for three, minus one from shield. 
He's got two damage. I'm going to push him one, two. So he's gone into that trap. It'll take him ages to get back to me, though. One damage from the trap. Oh, and immobilized. So he's not going to come towards me at all. Need a... I don't know where I've put my tokens. Need another immobilize for him. I don't want to slow things down too much, though, because I'm going to run out of cards. And then the archer's already been. So you go to a B. You get discarded. And this turn... I suppose we can try and go quick and unstoppable charge. 35. We don't have to decide which way around just yet, do we? The guard doesn't really matter, but he's going at zero. And the archer is going at 64. So we are going first. I'm thinking just charge in and do the unstoppable charge and hope that my next attack can get the guard. They're perfect for a skewer if I could stand on that obstacle, which I can't. So I've got three movements as well. Oh, it's just not happened, does it? He's only got three health. And the worst it could be is minus one. So yeah, I'm just going to march one, two, and hit with an unstoppable charge. Four damage. Zero. Four damage on the archer. The archer is dead. His turn. He's immobilized and tries to attack me. He's too far away. Oh, he's got one damage. He's got one health. So surely, whatever we lose here, we're going to short rest. This strength shouldn't have been on me for ages, but wait, I haven't been using it as if I uh, had strength. We're going to lose something, and it's going to be this spare dagger. I could have just attacked him from here with that. Could get it back. So we haven't got a move and an attack, so anything really. I'm gonna, what's, what's the other side? We haven't got a ranged attack. Oh, it's a six attack. Do you know what? I'm going to take a damage. To It's... Um, it's just random again, isn't it? Pull your hand. Lose card at random from your hand. So for damage, you'll lose a different random card instead. You can only do this once, so... Lose something else. So we'll lose warding strength. Oh, I was going to use the shield of it, but it's okay. So we're going at 15. The guard's going to go. No longer immobilized. God's going to go at 70. It's not good enough. I'm going to spare dagger him. <laughs> we'll just run off if it doesn't hit. So that should be one lower, shouldn't it? Three damage at three range. Finally, the plus. Four damage. He is finished. And the bruiser barges in. You feel quite satisfied with your efforts. Past the doors, a crowd is gathering to investigate the commotion. At the front is a very large imp carried on a button thrown by four minions. When you think about it, this imp must not have been shrunk like the rest of you, which would actually make him very small. Capture the intruders, King Button roars. Let's have some fun in the arena. Play scenario five, Button's Arena. But that is where we will leave it for now. We've seen three scenarios of the kind of very safe introductory ones that was uh thought about well maybe you want to show between one and five but hey you know we could i know i haven't really done this like a proper scenario because we've changed characters every scenario and i lost one but yeah this could return if you'd like to see more buttons and bugs it's such uh a, a like if you've seen any of my other like gloomhaven -y things I adore the world of Gloomhaven and the gameplay of Gloomhaven. And so this is just that in a really quick miniature package. I say, like, you are the, the things you are, some stuff's changed and streamlined a bit, but like the key things you're missing is like the, the cooperation and the uncertainty in the initiative and stuff that you have with the multiplayers. And there's no stuff to unlock, but you know, I didn't find that a problem with Jaws of the Lion. Kind of like expected it to be like that. Although, it would have been pretty amazing having a load of tiny boxes to find in here as well. I understand why that's probably not feasible. In an expansion, maybe. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's such a cool idea, and I love how the things have been, not just like the scale of stuff has been shrunken down, but the, the gameplay as well. Like I said, I never played Gloom Holding, but um, this, is, this is born from that. 
And it's such a cool idea of still having the core, hey, top of one thing, bottom of the other, but having the morphing of, we've got a much smaller hand of cards. So again, that speeds everything up. And then flipping between like the cards that you use come back as their B-sides. And then when you use their B-sides, they get discarded, but they're still lost things. It retains so much of the, the flavor and the thought of Gloomhaven, but yeah, it is uh, so speedy and still satisfying. There, hey Michael, there are 20 scenarios, but as we saw at the end of scenario two, depending on the character you're playing, you got sent to a different scenario. So I'm not sure exactly how many in a path, but there are like uh, 20 things going on. There could be a hidden envelope. I have honestly not looked, so I will not, uh, I will not spoil that. Hey Misty, how's it going? I've, I've just been uh, saying enough, but I've been loving it. But I am uh, incredibly biased as a lover of Gloomhaven. And as all, well, as my only kind of game design-ish thing, I'll harp on forever. Play my, play my scenario in Frosthaven, not my scenario, our scenario. I've signed it with my now wife, Rach. And uh, yeah, she had all the best ideas for it. There's two scenarios in the kind of side questy things of Frosthaven. And we thought they were fun. But there we go. We will leave it for now. Maybe we'll come back. I don't know how we will come back. Maybe we would just carry on with one of the characters, pick some, maybe just carry on as the bruiser and carry on unlocking stuff. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you'd like to see more in the future because we can always do some more streams of it and what you would like to see. I knew that like this, this is the, the day of the, the video embargo is over. So I knew that like, well, that day I'm streaming buttons and bugs then above all else. Uh, but we do have votes every month on what gets covered. You can join on Patreon. It's how I'm able to do any of this. So massive thanks if you can do that. I hope you enjoyed some time in miniature Gloomhaven Town. And uh, yeah, I will be back soon in pre-recorded form, I think. But we'll be back live very shortly for something else as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Thanks for helping me out. And I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, bye. Mm -hmm.